marching in time Move to the beat of the old and the blind Under the skin, hollow within Well, I officially welcome you to our 39th episode of MTTV, which is Metal Talk TV and it will be aired next week at some point so obviously I'm sure the PR will let you know but welcome awesome. and it's amazing to have you um so uh obviously you know um you had a fantastic career um lots and lots of uh, time on the road I mean you look amazing do you have a you know only get time uh, better in time do you have a, like a specific regime that you follow uh no i just i just like to stay busy and and uh you know kind of wake up hit the ground running and try to accomplish as much as i can each and every day you know do you follow like specific diet exercise you know do you have a routine at all um yeah i uh i started doing the intermittent fasting stuff so i don't eat until two o'clock in the afternoon and then i stop eating at eight o'clock and that uh that's really helped. You know, I've, I've tried a lot of different things over the years, but that one's been uh, probably the most effective for me. Um, and then I just try to exercise as much as I can. Awesome. Uh, I must try that. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, uh -huh. obviously, you're a man of many, many talents. And um, I took a sneak on um, you did a fantastic mural for the, uh, the arrival of your daughter. Where did you learn to draw and paint, especially? It was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I know just... Um, I think about, I don't know how many years ago uh, on New Year's, my, my New Year's resolution was to learn how to paint because I always loved, you know, art. And um, so I just try to teach myself and I would paint for three months and then I'd stop. And then the next New Year's, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get back at it again and I'd stop. So, um, you know, I've been painting on and off for about five years and, and um, that was the perfect opportunity to meet for me to spend a month painting a huge wall and and you know doing it for my daughter so it was it was a it was a fun project wow it's absolutely beautiful well done very you know great you. great accomplishment <laughs> such a short Thank time you. as well but obviously guitar has always been your thing when um would you say you picked up a guitar for the first time who inspired you and which guitar was it what make um, it was a black Les Paul, but it was an imitation. It was, uh, it was Tara, T-A-R-A. -A. And my, my friend at school, I always wanted to play guitar. I mean, since I was, um, every time I'd hear a song break down on the radio where it was just guitar chugging away, I just wanted to get my hands on a guitar and do the same thing. And uh, when my friend was selling me his guitar for $10, I thought it was perfect, you know, perfect opportunity to, to, to get started. So $10 for my first guitar, you know, it was, it was a great, great deal. $10 for Les Paul. <laughs> where do I well, sign it was, <laughs> it was an, Yeah, it was an imitation Les Paul, but it, you know, still $10 for any guitar is a, a, quite a deal, but he just wanted me to, yeah, you know, I think he wanted me to play in his band. So he needed another person to play guitar. Ah, uh, that's called bribery. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah. Excellent. Well, in, in one of the many interviews that Mars has given, he said that you kind of forced him into a, a bit of an initiation when, when you know, you had to join Alter Bridge, which entailed various things and bungee jumping. Would you say that you're a dad devil and you have a bit of a mischievous kind of nature? Uh, you know, that was, uh, that was a fun, that was a really fun thing. You know, it was uh, in Orlando, we have the world's tallest free fall. And um, you know, I like taking my friends and family when they come to town and see if they'll get done, get on there with me. You know, I, I took my wife on there and I think she peed her pants and cried. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my, you know, I take my brothers up there. And, and so when Miles came down, I thought it was perfect, a good bonding experience to get them to do it. And um, it's all on film. I think Miles has the video of it. Oh, we um, have to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't played it for you. you. You just have to ask him for it. But yeah, no, it was uh, it was fun. You know, he was a good sport about it, and uh, I know he was a little little more than terrified to do it. But he did it. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> I can only imagine though the terrible twos. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, roll fast forward, and and you've 
earned endless accolades. I mean, Grammy for the Creed single uh, with arms wide open, uh, guitarist of the year for three uh, years in a row, fourth uh, greatest heavy metal guitarist of all time and reflored by Metal Hammer. How does it feel to have achieved so much? Um, and where has it left you in terms of your perception? Do you think that the business has changed you a bit and especially success? How do you handle success? Uh, you know, all the, all the things, all the accolades along the way just keep you, keep you on the path. You know, they just make you feel like, uh, you know, hard work is paying off, you know. But whenever I see those kind of things, I, I, I always tell myself I got a lot of work to do to be able to earn that, you know, to earn those accolades. Because it's, uh, I'm still the type of guitar player that picks a guitar and, and sees all my weaknesses, you know. I, I want to, I, 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 I don't pick up a guitar and say, I'm great. You know, I pick up a guitar and say, I got a lot of work to do all the time. And uh, you're wrong. But yes, of course, you can always get better. <laughs> you know? That's, that's uh, you know, I see so many other great players out there doing so many different things that I want to learn that it's an endless quest to to, to learn on the guitar. And uh, I just love it. And I surround myself with uh, guitar amplifiers and have, have fun uh, just playing as much as I can. I mean, I'm, I'm two two inches from a guitar amplifier right now <laughs> oh here's it then lots of toys amazing <laughs> yeah. that's Disneyland uh -huh. for many many people especially you know those that will watch this <laughs> excellent yeah. um which band would you say has blown you away the very first time that you saw them and what was your blow away moment in terms of your own career and in any of the bands that you've been in um I think the most recent band that I saw that really blew me away was probably Gojira. You know, they're just, you know, um, there's not a lot of bands that you tour with that you take the time out to go watch them when they play every single night. And Gojira was one of them. Um, you know, it's just such an entertaining show and such, such great musicianship and such, um, they got a lot of heart, you know, a lot of, a lot of heavy bands are just, um, you know, it's, they're, they're great and they're technical, but sometimes it's, it's more anger than there is a lot of heart. And I think Gojira has a ton of heart in their aggressive side. And, and uh, so, yeah, it's, I think they were the most recent band that's blown me away. And that was years ago, but still, um, uh, as far as the, and I, I would say for performance wise for us, I think the Royal Albert Hall was probably the most um, uh, exciting thing for us to do. I think all of us would kind of agree with that. Well, I can say, you know, obviously I was there and I could see the green on everybody's faces. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a very, very special time for sure. I, I was at both nights. It was amazing. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being there. Yeah. We, we oh, loved it. Absolutely. You know me. <laughs> we go back, you know, I'll follow you, Ego. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's talk about gear a bit for all the muses that obviously will pick this up. But um uh, obviously you have your signature guitar with PRS, you have um other parts of equipment, a Morley pedal, um, you've had your MT15, which has like, been you know so uh, acclaimed in terms of like that has had an amazing success. It was nominated the best and um to uh, 2018. Um, any more on the horizon that we can, you know, hope for? Yeah, <laughs> I've been dialing in the uh, MT100 and the MT100 is just about, just about finished. So hopefully we'll announce it uh, next, next year. Um, and I think the plan is to maybe, maybe late next year it will be available, but it's, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be an amazing app. Um, I've got it sitting right here next to me right now. And I, you know, every, I have many versions of it sitting next to me. You know, we, we keep on going through dialing it in and getting it closer and closer and closer. So I think we're at this point, we're, we're, we're very close. Something tells me that this is the one that will probably give you a perm. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you've, um, you've celebrated 20 years with PRS, which is impressive. And for that, you had the incredible, uh, you know, the Fenton that everybody's talking about. I must admit I was drooling when I saw it myself. I was like, I've got to win the lottery. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously an incredible piece and, and of course limited edition, not accessible to many, but um, uh, who knows, is, is there 
perhaps going to be hope for like a more accessible type of model like can I see in the future? Yeah, we've talked about that. You know, it's like you said, we only did 20 of the 20th anniversaries that are all hand painted. And it's just, um, we'd like to do more, but it takes them so long to do these things that um, it's, it's, he can only do so many. So we've talked about maybe taking, taking a design and just doing um, maybe an SE with like a decal or something or something that's, that's, that you can uh, do on a larger scale. I've also talked to Joe about how, how fun it would be to do uh, when the MT100 comes out to do a run of, of amps that have art on the front panels of them. Um, and we'll see if that happens. But, you know, Joe's, Joe's an amazing artist. And I think um, I just think it's, it's, it's great that he puts so much work and so much effort into it. And those those lucky few that get to own those guitars are when they see those things, when they see them in their hands, they're going to see how, just how, how amazing he is when you see it in person. I can only imagine. I mean, it, it looks incredible on, obviously just on image. I can only imagine that it's yeah. very, very special piece. I mean, the black and red is spectacular. So beautiful oh, yeah. piece. Well done. Absolutely. Um, so let's go back to the band. Obviously, you've had some changes and, and not without trials and tribulations. As you said, you had to abruptly interrupt your tour because obviously, uh, you know, out of your hands, unfortunately, there was a tragedy for the um, in the Daughtry uh, household, shall we say. Uh, yeah. You are reprising that tour though next year now, February, I believe, January, February. Um, yeah, I think uh, so. February. Sorry. I think it starts February 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That would be US, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. US tour, excellent. Well, we'll have you first in Europe. Yes. I got my ticket yeah. already uh, with your home awesome. headline. Looking forward to it. It must have been hard Absolutely. not to be able to. You obviously, you know, you release a new album and then you can't tour it because there's lockdowns everywhere and all sorts oh, of restrictions. Yeah. And it's, and it's scary because things change every day. And, and, uh, I know Miles and Tim, are, my, my manager and, and Miles are over there now. And, um, you know, it's just a challenge, you know, with all the, every country have, have different rules and, and um, with lockdowns and, you know, uh, you know, you know what's going to happen a week from now. So it's, uh, it's kind of scary for all the people that are, for me as the artist, I just get to sit around and play guitar and play music. Those guys are worrying about the, the logistics of these tours and the, and, each government's got different rules and it's getting more and more difficult right now. And, you know, we, we were hoping that things would get easier, but right now things are, are a little, little tough. Absolutely. Well, yeah, it's, it's a very unsettling times, I guess, for everybody. Um, yeah. So you changed uh, drummer as well. Garrett Whitlock left some time back initially on a break um, as a personal leave and you had Brian Bennett filling in for the remainder of the tour. Were you anxious about the reaction of the fans? Because Garrett has such a distinctive sound. I mean, he's such an amazing drummer. Yeah, I mean, you always have to be careful about when you when you change a band member. And um, the thing when we did this record, I when I was putting together "Marching in Time," um, the song itself, I had told Ryan, I'm like, the ending of the song has a piece that's going to be a big highlight for you here it's going to be your moment it's almost like a drum solo outro kind of thing and it will be a good introduction for you into the recording process of this band and and um and he uh i think he nailed it so um you know a lot of people uh you know the only chatter i saw were people saying you know i was you know nervous about hearing a new drummer but he you know but he's amazing and he is amazing and he's a, he's an amazing guy too Absolutely, yeah, lovely guy and, and great drummer too. So yeah, excellent. What about, um, so uh, Tanner obviously has been touring with you even earlier than that. You, you know, Wolf has been um, the bassist and then he left and then obviously uh, Tanner is a touring bassist. Would you say that you now finalize the lineup for Tremonti and Ryan and, and Tanner are perms? Yeah, I mean, we, we love them. This is the first record that they've both recorded on. Um, so it was, you know, Eric had done the bass on the last record. Now on this record, they kind of split the duties on this record. Um, but yeah, no, Tanner's, Tanner and Ryan are just such good people and good friends. And um, 
you know, you're loyal to people that are loyal to you and that work hard. So it's, uh, there's no reason why anybody would not be there on the next album. Absolutely. So I feel that we should talk about the album. So here it is for the viewers. And you see, I've done my homework. Amazing album. I'm yes. It, Marching in Time. Um, this was released the 24th of September. Um, obviously, I assume, as we were saying, that you may have had probably little chance to tour it quite yet. I know that you've done a bit in the US, yeah. which was great. You're finally able to come to um, Europe, and we are ecstatic about it. Um, tell us about the process, you know, in terms of like writing um, the, the concept behind and uh, how you even manage to get together in terms of logistics because of all these restrictions, lockdowns, you know, different rules for different states, et cetera. Um, well, I was, uh, you know, I had all the time in the world by not, by being at home to write and write and write. And then once I figured I had enough material for two albums, probably, cause I had worked so much. Um, I had Eric fly into town and he quarantined himself for like a week or 10 days or whatever it was before he came over to our place. And, uh, and then for three months or so, we worked on demos. I showed him all the stuff that I'd written and then, um, uh, he would program the drums and track bass and I'd get in there and play guitar and sing. And, um, by the time we hit the studio, I had everything arranged and demoed and uh, lyrics, everything, but guitar solos were all finalized. Um, so we we're, um, way more prepared than, than we have ever been in this band because it's, it's always kind of been a fire drill going into each record because we're trying to balance Ultra Bridge and Tremonti and, and trying to get as much time as possible to work on stuff, but never had a, a full year of, of nothing to do but focus on an album. So this album is a reflection of all the time in the world being able to, you know, constantly dig into each song and make sure they're arranged, you know, with, with they, they couldn't be improved with the imagination that I had at that point. I, I, I drilled them to death. And well, we can definitely see the results. So congratulations on that. I absolutely love it personally. So great album. Do you have um, a special song or a favorite song, shall we say, and why? Um, I th I'd say uh, either If Not For You or uh, Marching In Time. Um, I think If Not For You, just because to me it was right off the bat, it, it just stood out to me. Um, I remember when I played the, the demos for Elvis, our producer, that was immediately his favorite song. It just always kind of had a special vibe for me. Um, but, uh, and then Marching in Time, the title track to me was, was a, a hard song to complete, put together. And it, and it, um, in the end, I was very happy with the way it turned out. Oh, it's amazing. Very happy. It's a beautiful Thank song. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. What about, um, so obviously you always wanted to be a guitarist, but especially when you started your um, own band, you know, Tremonti, you were kind of like forced to be in the spotlight front man, suddenly singing, songwriting. Obviously you've done lots of writing in, in Creed but, and Alter Bridge, of course. Um, how does it feel wearing the different hats and do you have a preference at all or, um, you know, take us through your journey in terms of being a singer and especially a songwriter. Yeah, I, uh, well, in the Tremonti band, the, I love singing. Singing is, is to me is uh, just a lot of fun. It's, it, I don't feel the pressures that I feel with the guitar playing when I sing. Singing is, it's just a natural thing. You sing your best, you sing all you can do, you do all you can do. Um, and I'm not, um, at this point in my career, I don't think I'm, um under fire as a singer as much as i would be as a guitar player so all this stuff i get to do it's almost judge it's like the judgment free zone when i get to sing you know so it's uh it, it it's an enjoyment for me but what i don't like doing is being a front man i don't like having to entertain in between songs that's something that's uh i'm sure i'll get better at it over the years but that's something that it's just not my 
type of personality. I like to kind of be the guy, you know, on the side, you know, playing my role and I like singing and playing, but as soon as I've got to do the talking in between, that's the tough part. That's something you can't practice. You just got to do it on stage. Yeah, very true. You have to be a natural, I guess. Oh, you know, you do yeah. just fine. I've seen you perform loads of times. So, um, yeah, for sure. Um, the inevitable questions that I'm sure many people want me to ask you are, um, when can you, can we expect a new Alter Bridge album? We are planning to go to the studio in April and May to record the next Alter Bridge record. But at this point, um, me and Miles haven't um, put together ideas. We're just kind of working separately. And then um, Scott Phillips was actually going to come over today and I was going to go over some ideas with him. Um, so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll write songs and then I will get with Scott Phillips and go over arrangements with him. And then I'll get with, uh, I'll just get demos made. And, and, um, I think me and miles will just get together and compare demos and, um, hopefully be ready by, by April. We're working as hard as we can to, to get there. It's kind of a short turnaround in between Solar Records and Alter Bridge Records, so we're. I, I honestly don't know how you working. do it all. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I don't know how you do it all. Like you, <laughs> you fit it all in between all the bands, you know, and even Miles is on Slasher Miles, and obviously Alter Bridge Tremonti. It's impressive, I, you know, the pace that you guys keep. So yeah, Thank I'm you. sure that you know, I'm sure that the fans can wait an extra couple of months <laughs> if if required. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um. What about you? You had um, a stint at writing a book and it was very successful in collaboration with John Shirley and obviously you've done the soundtrack to it, which was biopic. Do you have any plans in that sense of, you know, is there going to be another book on the horizon at some point? I don't know when you're going to find the time. But hey. <laughs> yeah, well, one of my biggest uh, things I want to achieve in life is become a published author because I'm a huge, I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of authors than I am of like, if I run into a musician, I'll be in awe of musicians. But when it comes to authors, I think their imaginations are uh, so incredible. When I get to meet authors that I'm a fan of, I'm even more of a fanboy than I am of, of musicians. So it's, um, it's been my dream to, to, uh, you know, to, to become an, a published author, you know, I've, I've putting together a ton of different stories that I want to, um, see through and um so finally some i've got uh, a, a, a big publishing house that's interested in dying machine but uh when i had a meeting with them they had said they wanted the book to read a little more like the song a dying machine than the book played out so i'm rewriting part of the book um right now i've i've almost got three chapters done and they've loved what they've read so far and um once i finalize the third chapter they're going to present it to the board and hopefully i get up my first big publishing deal with uh, one of the top five publishing houses and it would be and they'd said it might be a multi-book deal because i've already got another book laid out and uh, turned in the synopsis to them and they they really enjoyed it so um i could get a two book deal here it just be it would probably be within the next month or two that i'll know so I'm very excited about it. Wow, it sounds very exciting. Congrats and yeah. fingers crossed for you. I wish you all the best with yeah, that. I'm, I'm sure thank you'll you. get it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> if you had to do it all over again, what would be the best advice that you would give to yourself? Um, geez, I would say, um, I would, as a guitar player, I'd say learn learn the blues. You know, learn learn the rules because I've always I've never, I've always kind of played outside the box the way I play with alternate tunings and writing and whatnot. I never, uh, and when you play that way, it's hard to um, play along with other musicians, you know, you, to get invited to do blues jams or jazz jams. Or you, you, I'd like to learn, I would have liked myself to have more of a foundation on the guitar than, than an experimental approach. But I think the experimental approach helped me as a songwriter. So um, hopefully, uh, learning the rules too, too thoroughly wouldn't, you know, hurt the imagination too much. That's right. 
well i guess yeah probably a, a mixture of both would do for sure i mean you know you seem to have done pretty well and and it helps you with um pushing yourself you know out of your comfort zone and exploring completely uncharted territory so yeah i suppose yeah. both um excellent well what does the future reserve for big tremonti machine uh, well, we were touring um, Europe in January, the, the States in February, March, and we go in the studio with Alter Bridge, April, May, and then we're going to go back out with Tremonti, hit Europe again next summer. Yes. Um, and then uh, and then tour through the fall with Tremonti, and then next winter we'll go back on tour with Alter Bridge. So that's when we'll shift gears and... And then I also have a huge project, something that um, could be more excited than I've ever been to put out an album next year. And it's uh, it's a top secret album. It's not Alter Bridge, it's not Tremonti, it's not uh, Creed. It's uh, something I've never done before and it's all for charity. And uh, I'm starting an organization, I'm trying to start an organization called Take a Chance for Charity. Um, and um, we're gonna announce it uh, March 21st of next year okay and obviously you let us know more about what that all entails yeah yeah well it's very it's been very That's very good. exciting <laughs> sounds great uh -huh. okay we look forward to hearing you know about that fantastic well i want to thank you so so much for your time with us today it's been amazing thank to you. see you again and obviously i'm very much looking forward to seeing you in january i'll be there i've got my ticket already um just to reiterate this is the latest album marching in time which has been released in september available for most outlets your website is out apparently from of the cds but there's some vinyls and some merch bundles so go check it out uh, careful, it's www.marktremonti.com, not tremonti.com, because I checked. It's an Italian metallurgical website, otherwise you would just find some welders. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, Mark, thank you so much. It's been amazing thank seeing you. you, and thank you for your time. Take care, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. See you very See you soon. soon.